Hello and welcome to a video on how to create your VM, um, how to install all the necessary things for Minecraft, and how to configure the firewall, depending on what is needed. Uh, this is so that I don't have to keep doing this at the start of every single video, I just do it here, now, and then if you need to know how to do it, you just come back to this video, because it won't be in any of the future ones. So, the way you do it is you go to the link that will be in the description down below, um, and you will make yourself an account. It will ask you for some kind of card, however it will not charge you. Then what you're going to want to do is, once you've done that, you will arrive at this page. If not, just click up here, and that will take you to this page. Then click on create a VM instance. In here, you're going to want to give it a name. I'm just going to call my video. Or if you want to, you don't have to give it a name, you can just leave it as it is. In placement, make sure it's on AD1. As you can see, it only allows it in AD1. Uh, however, some of them will say you're always free eligible, even though they're not when you first set it up. So just be wary of that. Then for the image, we're going to want to change it from Oracle Linux to Ubuntu. Select. Then for the shape, we're going to set it to Ampere. Click this one, and then drag it all the way to the end. You can actually set it to however many CPU cores and however much RAM you would like. However, I recommend just putting all of it. Select shape. Then in networking, you can leave it this as is, either create a new one if it's your first time, or select an existing one. If you can leave this as select existing subnet, or um, create a new public one if you haven't already got one. However, make sure you're assigning a public IPv4 address. If you do not, then no one will be able to connect to your server, which is obviously something you don't want. Then in add SSH keys, just press save private key. Then I recommend that you open up a folder and you save it, just so that um, you can't lose it somehow. Then in boot volume, leave all of this as it is, and then press create. Now you're going to want to give it a while, and once this says running, we'll be ready to connect. I'll be back where it does. So now as you can see this is green and it says running. You may need to refresh the page for it to happen, however it should just do it automatically. So now that we have done that, we are going to set up the firewall in here. The way that we do that is we come down to where it says subnet, click on it, wait for it to load, then click on default security list, and then add ingress rules. In here you put 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 slash zero, leave the protocol as TCP, and then put 25565, add another ingress rule, and then you, I recommend you copy that, paste it there, 25565. Then you're going to want to add more ingress rules, depending on the ports I say need to be forwarded at the start of the video. So I will give a big long list, it will, it will also be in the description, which will say which ports you need to forward, oh yeah you should put that as UDP, sorry and whether or not they need to be TCP or UDP and then you need to do that in here, okay? before we then, before carrying on with the rest of the video otherwise it won't work there will always be 25565 in there because that is the default port for Minecraft okay? and then just press add ingress rules it's that simple then we go back and we go back and then we're in here now it's time to actually connect to the server. So the way we're going to use that is we're going to use putty and putty gen. So in putty gen, which is what we need first, we click load, then change this to all files, and then this one, the private key that you just saved. If you aren't already in the folder, then you will need to navigate to it. Then press open. It will um, successfully import the foreign key, just press OK then save that private key again, mm, uh, yes, we're fine to do that, and then just put call it something like access, it can be whatever you want, just make sure you know what it's called, then press enter. Now we can close Putty Gen, and now we're going to actually connect in Putty. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to put Ubuntu at, then you're going to copy your public IP address, and paste it in there, 
then click the plus next to SSH, click on auth, click browse, then find your access.ppk, open, and then open again. This will arrive, just press accept, and then we are in. Okay, now we're going to set a password just in case you ever get locked out and your private key stops working for whatever reason. It shouldn't ever do, however, it is a chance of that happening. So we're going to do sudo s to get ourselves as root. Then you're going to copy the command that I put in the description, which is this one, and press enter. That will bring you into this um, text editor. Use the arrow key to scroll down all the way until you find the one that says password authentication. Then use the arrow keys to go along and change that no to a yes. Then press Control X, Y, and enter. Now we are allowing um, the server to actually accept password authentication. Then you're going to want to run the next command that's in the description, which is this one. This will restart it so it actually accepts that config instead of the one that it had run when it started. Then type in passwd space ubuntu, press enter, and then give it a password. As you can see, nothing actually appears, so you do need to make sure you are typing it incorrectly. There you go, password has been updated successfully, and then run the same thing, but with root this time. There we go, now we have successfully updated our passwords. Now what I recommend you do, is you open Putty, you put, for example, Ubuntu at copy your public IP address, paste it in, but don't add your SSH key, open it, and then put in your password. And then if you can connect, you know you've done it correctly, and you aren't ever going to get locked out. If it doesn't work, go back and try again. So, now it is time to install Java. This is something that is essential for both the firewall we're going to be installing and for Minecraft to run. For any versions of Minecraft that are before 1.17, you can get away with just Java 11. However, for 1.17 and above, you will need Java 16. It's always best to have a more up-to-date version though, so I'm going to show you how to install Java 16 here. So you're then going to need to copy the next command in the description, which will be this one. Press enter, and then enter again, and this will add a repository that will allow us to install Java. Then if you take the command after that, which is this one, that will actually run the installer. Then press Y, yes we do want to continue, and then wait a few seconds, then use your right arrow key to get the little red box over OK, press enter, left arrow key, enter, then that will final, fully install Java 16. You'll just give it a second, then it will do that. As you can see, it's now done. So, now it's time to do the second part of our file. We already did the first part in here, but now it's time to do the second part. So for that, we're going to need to run this command, which will install something called firewall. Press yes. Wait a few seconds. And then it will be installed. So, next up, you need to run this command. Then press up and change where it says 25565. Sorry, and then change TCP to say UDP, enter, and then change 25565 to be whatever the ports were at the start of the video that I said. Okay, so you will need to, so whatever you've put forwarded when we went into the subnet and did all that, you'll also need to do here, both whether it's TCP and then also UDP by changing this to say TCP. One second, um, I was really stupid, completely forgot. Um, you've got to run this command. If we don't run this command, it won't work. So run this command. I'm really sorry about that. To access the files, you're going to want to put use FileZilla. Um, which is an, a great app, and then put sftp colon forward slash forward slash, and then paste your public um, IP address, and then put the username as Ubuntu, 
then click on edit, settings, SFTP, add key file, and then use the basic one. However, if you do not want to do that, you should just be able to put your password in there, and then that will let you join. However, I recommend just to ease, you just you know, add your key file, However, make sure it's this one, and not the one for party, and now you can connect. Um, I hope that was useful, uh, thank you for watching.